Hello and welcome back to The Huddle. Liam Santa Maria with you as always. And uh, while well, we are pretty much a week away from some preseason action, the blitz schedule has dropped. It's just around the corner and that works well because we've got one more coach to speak to in our preseason series with the head coach, Scott Morrison from the Perth Wildcats. Mate, uh, thanks for joining me in quarantine with the family. Can't be, can't be easy. Uh, Good to speak to you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, honored to be on. I've listened to all the other episodes, and uh, the only thing I'm I'm sad I didn't get to hear the intro music because it always gets me me <laughs> jacked up. All the uh, the highlights and stuff like that. So uh, I'll have to at least listen to the first minute um, of the episode when it comes out. Yeah, man, that's post production. That's post production. That's the magic of uh, of podcasts. Um, how is quarantine, mate? Two month old, two year old. Um, I've been thinking of you on a daily basis because that's got to be challenging. Yeah, I mean, it's been tough. The first couple of days were okay. Then we hit a, we hit a wall early. Um, and then we kind of regrouped yesterday and we're just trying to get the kids on a, on a decent schedule so everyone gets sleep. That's kind of job one. And then try not to think too much about the countdown. Um, but uh, it will be nice to get over the hump and, and see some light at the end of the tunnel. It's been... It's been a long time getting here, um, and we finally get here through all the, the hurdles and, and loops we had to jump through, and uh, we get here and we get slapped with the two weeks. So uh, just one more thing we got to do, and then uh, surely by the, by the grace of God, we'll be on the court here in about nine days. You, you posted that quote from The Wire when you first checked in about two days, the day you come in and the day you come out, and I'm guessing you're a couple of days in and you realize that's not actually true. You're doing every single day right now. Yeah, yeah, no, I realized that uh, early on day two, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a fun quote to put out there. Um, I'm a big Wire fan, but uh, yeah, no, no, anyone who believes that is, is fooling themselves. Right before you jumped on with me, uh, you had a Zoom session with your team. I guess it was Mike Kelly and the coaching staff and the like, an hour or so with them this morning. I assume you've been doing that on a regular basis, if not a daily basis, over recent times. What, what does that involve? What has that involved as you've tried to be involved in what's been going on on the court? Yeah, no, it's been quite an experience, really. Um, obviously not ideal, but I've learned quite a bit throughout the last month or two. We basically started, you know, the week I was hired, uh, two, two or so coaches Zooms a week with all the staff, just talking about stuff we wanted to work on that week, where we were going with offense and defense, getting some feedback from the guys who have been in the league before, um, you know, doing some scouting assignments, stuff like that. And then once we started our workouts, which is probably early September, uh, I would do one or two kind of team film sessions a week with the guys, with the whole, whole crew. And this last two weeks now has been every day. So every day we train, we start with a film session from the previous day, just like I would do if I was there on the court. So really got to give a lot of credit to Mike and the other coaches who are not only, you know, taking the load on the court, but making sure I get the film and uh, getting everybody organized. But uh, overall, I think it's been pretty good, uh, all things considered. And it's helped me to become a better communicator. I'm not saying I'm a great communicator by any stretch, but a better one. And also kind of, you know, you see holes in your in your teaching process because you have to be pretty crisp to get your point across without being able to get on the court and go through the actions yourself. Uh, it's it's interesting it's unique it's kind of bizarre I mean people around the world have been finding ways to work from home over the last couple of years coaching a professional basketball team quote unquote from home is is unique Jesse Wagstaff had a, had a quote in the West Australian today talking about his expectations that it will result in some growing pains for you guys earlier in the season do, do you agree with that? I might, but I think there'd be growing pains if I was there too. Uh, it's a new new coach, a uh, couple of new coaches with Mike and I both being our first year, uh, some new players, and it's even magnified by the fact that the previous kind of regime was there for so long, and uh, by all accounts, probably doing the same thing, give or take, every season. So for someone like Jesse, who's used to the same thing over and over, uh, not that it's a bad thing, they obviously had a lot of great success, but uh, to have someone come in new and then have them you know, yelling at him from an iPad uh, on the wall uh, has to be difficult. So, yeah, I'm sure there'll be some growing pains, but we're not trying to win uh, the Blitz. We're trying to win the grand final. So I'm not too worried about that. I think the progress has been pretty good and uh, we're only a week away now. So uh, we're almost there. 
And uh, at least my last few seasons being in the NBA and the G League, I'm getting probably the same amount of time in preseason as I, as I would have had with those teams. So it's kind of unique to have this much time to prepare, and, and we tried to make the best of it. Hey, you spoke before about um, taking in the other interviews and chats I've had with the other head coaches over the past couple of months. What have you, what have you learned from them, listening to, to each of them talk about the upcoming season and their squads? Well, I mean, uh, I'm kind of a, a guy who has – followed the league loosely, you know, from a distance over the last few years. Obviously, that's how I knew about the job in the first place. And uh, I know some of the coaches. Uh, I've met some personally, others I, I know through just watching games and, and studying film. So I have a lot of respect for the staffs that are in place throughout the, cor the course of the league. And uh, it's nice to hear those guys speak. And you never know, you might get a little tidbit here or there about their approach or their personnel. And uh, sometimes you, you learn stuff just as a coach, uh, even listening to Coach Vickerman talk about uh, not deviating from his system on, on Kiefer Sykes in the, in the playoffs last year and instead digging down and, and really fixing what their game plan was and, and not giving in. I referenced that in a coach's meeting yesterday. So little things like that, you never know where you can learn. And with the amount of great coaches that we have here in Australia, uh, I'm just kind of a sponge to try and learn as much as I can from anyone. Um, talk about great coaches. We've also great, got great fans here. And as you would know by now, you, you guys have the best fans, the best fan base in the NBL, bar none. There's some other good ones. The Adelaide fans have been great for a long time, but the Wildcats fans, are there's a lot of them. They're super passionate. They're really engaged. And um, I did something a little different in the lead up to this chat. I, I opened it up. I opened it up to the fan base to kind of, chip in, chime in and, and ask you some questions. Um, as you can imagine, they had a bit of fun with the name right off the, right yeah. off the top. Uh, Kingy has a relationship with Emmanuel Macron. Sarah, how does it feel to be the most liked ScoMo in Australia? Um, Izzy was tapping into her knowledge of, uh, of our PM's sort of memorable quotes. She, she, is it true his advice to bench players is, if you have a go, you'll get a go. Um, but I liked this one. It, 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 are you looking into the process on how to legally change your name ahead of the season from JJ Dynamite? Well, given the amount of red tape it took to get here and uh, all the different processes, I'm sure that changing the name wouldn't be the best uh, move right now. I think I'll, I think there's an election coming up in the next year or two, so maybe I'll wait and see how it goes. Um, everyone keeps telling me that I'm the most popular scomo but yet somehow the other one's elected so someone must like them um and uh, the last thing i'll say on that is sadly none of those great fans work for wa health because uh, we're still stuck in this quarantine and uh maybe they're waiting to see what kind of offense we're gonna run before they try to get me out of here <laughs> i think a lot of those people were seeing an email come through from scott morrison just being like delete you know what i'm good <laughs> Uh, it's going to be interesting for you, though, man. I get the feeling like it's just starting. I like the way you're leaning into it, but um, I think you should brace yourself. How, how about these ones? You're talking about um, uh, getting to know the league, watching it a little bit over the last couple of seasons. These questions, this one from Caleb, what did you know about the league prior to getting the job? What teams or players stand or, or stood out for you? And, and Gary Lee asked something kind of similar. In watching NBL games, what has caught your eye as something unique or, or characteristic of the league? Sure. So um, maybe I'll start with that one. That's, a, that's an easier one, just a, a quick hit. But basically coming from the, the American pro level, the NBA, G League, whatever the case is, to studying the NBL a little more closely, I think pick and roll coverages are, are quite a bit different. Um, and, and more specifically, we're going to see a lot more quick shows in the NBL and, and people playing on top off the ball, especially guys like Bryce. And in the NBA, it's more of a, you know, send everything to the big drop coverage, ice coverage and pick and roll. So for me, um, that was a coverage that we haven't worked a whole lot against the last few seasons. So that was my number one priority is to kind of brush up and get different coaches viewpoints as to how to attack the show in, you know, in the best way. Um, as far as the other questions go, I spent some time here maybe nine, 10 years ago when I was still coaching university and I recruited two kids, one kid from Melbourne, one kid from Brisbane. And, uh, during that time I was here, I tried to meet as many coaches as I could. I sat down with Lindsey Gaze and he talked me through the shuffle. I sat down with uh, Chris Anstey, uh, Joey Wright and Aaron Fern are still friends of mine until today. Uh, obviously, none of those guys are coaching this year, but um, all great coaches. So I, I tended to follow their teams, you know, over the years. And, 
you know, kind of by osmosis, I saw some players, saw the style of play. So I'm not totally um, coming in blind. Uh, by the same token, I'm, I'm not coming in fully aware either because uh, everyone's been in this league a lot longer than I have, and I'm trying to learn as fast as I can. Uh, but someone like Coach Gorgian, you know, Australian national teams is always the first film I would go to in the offseason just to see if I could pick up something different that I could bring to the Celtics or the Red Claws. So I'm, I'm a student of the game. I'm not by any means the next John Wooden or the next Lindsey Gaze, but uh, I'm aware of the league and I've watched it and, and uh, I'm kind of excited to, to try and put some sort of a small stamp on things myself. You talk about those, those coverages, especially pertaining to Bryce. Have you, have you been talked through or have you watched the tape of the kind of journey, the history that he's experienced in that regard leading up to this point in this league? I mean, a couple of seasons ago, Will Weaver in charge of the Sydney Kings. They face off a number of times in the grand final series, him tearing that drops coverage apart. And as a result, teams really just shy away with that with him if you watched that and, and what have you taken from all of that with him yeah I mean I, I, getting ready for the interview process and, and and the selection process for the job I obviously spent a lot of time on Bryce's film because he's you know he's one of the best players if not the best player in the league and um, when you're coaching at the professional level those are the guys you got to pay attention to first so yeah I see how the teams play him um, it's tough for him to get free so I don't want to give away any early secrets that I'm sure will be quite evident after game one of the blitz, but um, we're trying to find some ways to get him into space and, and use his speed where he's not getting kind of jammed up by, you know, different coverages defensively. And uh, as a team, try and space the floor as best we can so that not only Bryce, but our other uh, talented guys can have some room to operate and uh, make good reads at the rim to get the best possible shot for us. So uh, I think things have been going pretty well, but you never know you're playing O and D against yourself for weeks. And then, uh, that first game where the ball goes up against someone different, you could, you could totally be in for a surprise. So uh, that's why I'm excited for the blitz. Cause you got five games to work some kinks out, especially with our situation with me be, not being there uh, very valuable, but we'll see if some of the stuff that I have in mind will help get Bryce free. And uh, I'm hoping that our roster will also help him get it free because uh, there's some guys that you can't really leave. Um, there's you talk about the roster and what they've done in the past, I mean, uh, there's a few questions here about style of play, you know, and um, one in particular about the offense, Jacob asked, not, not a Cats fan, but I'm curious if the new coach will still implement, implement some of the old flex offense that's been highly successful for Bryce. And it's interesting because, of course, Bryce is a, is a baller. Right, he, he, he was doing it in the States at the college level. He's, a, he's obviously got some NBA experience, but in the NBL, he's never played for anyone apart from Trevor. And as you know from your experience, sometimes you just find a system that works for you and your skill set. And that they tinkered with it a little bit over the years, but that system worked really well for Bryce. The whole team played off of him. I mean, will there still be some elements of that and what you're going to do at the offensive end? Yeah, I mean, I guess my answer to that would be that I'm not a flex guy myself per se, but uh, in watching the film, they definitely ran the heck out of flex and did a great job figuring out where Bryce was and how they were playing him and tweaking their options so that they can get him looks. Um, so I, I really enjoyed watching the film just to see that kind of process in action. Now, uh, I'm going to take probably more of an NBA style attack to the team. Um, I appreciate the FIBA game. I have a lot of FIBA experience and I actually like the FIBA style better, but I think there's some things we can take from the NBA in terms of getting guys uh, advantages and offense quicker. And uh, I'm more of a get an advantage as fast as you can and then learn how to maintain that advantage until you finish the, the, the critical read at the end. Um, but with that said, you need to have quick hitters. And we've always had in Boston and Maine in my previous years, we've always had quick hitters that kind of resemble the flex screens. And uh, knowing that the guys are comfortable, especially someone like Bryce or Jesse, who's been here for a long time, comfortable in those screens, I'll definitely try to implement some play calls that we can go to where, you know, the footwork's the same and the action's the same and the angles are the same. And hopefully tap into a little of the, the magic that I, I missed the last 10 years. Um, I think part of what you said there probably answered a couple of questions guys had about, um, about style. You know, Harpy was asking what, what you think you can transition from the NBA game 
um, and the style into the FIBA, the NBL game, what would fit and what won't? Greg Wise was asking, how will your game style fit with FIBA court size and Aussie style? I mean, there, there are some interesting elements to those questions because we've seen it a lot going in the other direction when NBL teams play NBA teams in preseason and the spacing of the floor, of course, the athletes and the skill level of those NBA guys, but the, the spacing of the floor was a huge problem for them to try to solve. Um, that their ability to help from the weak side as a result, leaving shooters open in the corner. What are those challenges going to be for you transi transitioning into a bit more of a compacted court in terms of the rules and the layout of the floor? For sure. Well, I mean, with the court being smaller, a little smaller, spacing is that much more critical. Um, you can't have, you know, three feet is a, is a big deal, three mm. feet one way or the other. So we're, we've been harping on that, uh, trying to keep guys from creeping out of the spot they're supposed to be in. Um, I think that the Aussie style, quote unquote, I'll, I'll try to have to figure out what that is as we go. But one thing I'm excited about is I think in general, the Aussie style involves being very team centered and, uh, sacrificing a little bit of individual for the betterment of the team, something that maybe you don't see every day in the NBA. So I'm looking forward to that side of it. That's more of a FIBA international uh, kind of thing that often works well against, uh, you know, the Americans and NBA teams, like you said. Um, but I think it's basketball is basketball. And I think you, to be the best coach you can be, you have to combine little pieces of everywhere you've been. And to use an example, I guess I would go to the offensive side of the ball where I think the NBA has kind of perfected getting their best players an advantage quickly. Um, but then I think FIBA is much better in general of maintaining that advantage and playing as a team to keep the defense on their, on their heels uh, until you can get that good look. So I'm hoping I can bring a little bit of the first and tap into the kind of meat and potatoes of the possession and then see if we can make sure we're working with the guys to make that right read versus help and be able to finish, whether it be at the rim or uh, catch and shoot situation. I thought this was a really cool question. Ian Matthew Bassett, um, talking about defense and, and rebounding, he said the Perth Wildcats have traditionally hung their hat on defense and crashing boards. Does he plan on continuing this tradition or introducing something new? Now, of course you plan on your team being an elite defensive team and very good on the defensive boards, but I'm interested in, your mentality about the offensive glass because the wildcats have been kind of interesting in this area for a long period of time especially throughout the trevor gleason era where year after year after year they were one of the top couple of teams in offensive rebounding percentage because they just prioritized it they and and you know they took they just sent bodies to the glass they crashed it relentlessly and then you've seen other guys come in like will weaver I mentioned him again earlier. Um, he had a, had, had a good, you know, he had the best rebounder in the league in Andrew Bogut. They were number one in, in defensive rebounding percentage and they were last in the league in offensive rebounding percentage because they just didn't prioritize it. They, they were more interested in defensive transition. Where do you sit on that? Because it's something that the Wildcats have been very successful with in recent years. Sure, well, that's a kind of a, pretty hot debate in the analytics rooms right now, at least back uh, in North America in terms of, do you want to, is it better to get these second chances or is it better to make sure you don't give up transition layups? Um, so I think that, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll reference my guy, Aaron Fern again. He's kind of well known in, uh, at least in, in my circles for having his uh, all five guys crash system, which if you really dig into it, it's not really all five guys crashing. It depends on the situation. Um, so I'm going to tap into a little bit of that um, but I'm going to start conservative and limit the guys we have crashing to start the season, try to make sure we have our transition defense rules down. And then hopefully if we can, uh, you know, do a good job in transition D, we can start to be a little more aggressive on the glass and create some second opportunities. But uh, I probably would lean towards not giving up layups, but figuring out a way that you can still crash enough guys to get you some second chances if you crash the right people. Um and get the best of both worlds. Okay. So we're going to see some tag ups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I think the Wildcats fans are coming strong here. How about this? Four-time champion, Greg Hire. Can I have a job? Not, not non-playing, obviously. He's hung the boots up. He's keen to get involved. 
Well, I can, if you can uh, DM me, I can send him Danny Mills's uh, contact information. <laughs> He's going to be one making the calls on that. Or if he uh, depends on how off the court he wants to be, I got a two year old and a two month old here um, that could use some managing. I'm pretty sure that's not what he's looking for, but uh, depends how desperate he is, I guess. But uh, yeah, no, tell him to tell him to look me up when I get out of this hotel. And if I'm uh, still sane, maybe we can work something out. He's actually a great resource to tap into in a lot of different ways. Uh, this is an interesting one. Jackson McDonald, it's about the youth on your roster. Well, what are your thoughts on Travers and the young guys? Purchase, Zunit, um, Sherville, Hayes Brown. The Wildcats do have these guys for at least the next two years, he says. Who knows with Travers, with the draft, what's their role going to be this season? Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on how things go and how healthy we are and all that other stuff. Um, I'm excited about our roster because we have a nice mix of vets who have been that quote unquote there before, whether it be in Perth or somewhere at a high level that they've been successful. And then we have a group of guys who are kind of just getting their start in their pro career and they're hungry to climb the ranks and learn and, and challenge these other guys. So um, I think that makes for a healthy practice environment. And my challenge will be to try and keep everybody happy because when you have that talent and that kind of mix, um, there's going to be some guys that don't get the opportunity that they want, just like any other team. So uh, I'll try to make sure I keep challenging them in practice, making sure there's lots of uh, attention to their development without sacrificing uh, the main goal, which everyone in Perth is quite aware of, which is to make the uh, grand final and try and win it. So um, I'm going to, I hung my hat on player development and when I was in the NBA. That was one of my main, my main roles. So I won't turn my back on that. I'll do my best to make sure the guys improve throughout the course of the season as much as possible. But again, not at the expense of trying to get that 11th banner. Really cool question here from uh, Wince84, tapping into your time with the Celtics. He says, a young undermanned Celtics go up 3-2 in the 2018 Eastern Conference Finals. LeBron, arguably at his greatest, averages 40 plus 13 and nine for the rest of the series and the Cavs, advanced digging up bad memories for you no doubt how close did you think boston were he asks and how do you even game plan for that level of individual brilliance so yeah thanks for the memories um <laughs> probably one of the highs and lows of my coaching career so far all in the same all in the same week uh, i can remember i had a, my wife and i had an apartment walking distance to the boston garden i remember walking to game seven thinking that we were going to the finals. Um, and as good as LeBron was, I'll refer to a favorite uh, Coach Stevens quote, which is actually Bill Belichick from the Patriots, is you can't win until you keep from losing. Um, and that what it means is basically you can't beat yourself. And in that game seven, if you were to rewatch it, we took a lot of bad shots and a lot of uh, kind of risky plays. And when you're playing a better team as the Cavs were, uh, you can't afford to be taking chances. You got to be solid and efficient and uh, getting the best possible looks for yourself on defense or on offense every time down. And uh, to be honest, that probably helped my coaching career because that was one of my areas of focus was shot selection. And uh, it kind of got exposed that maybe we weren't doing as good a job as possible. And uh, a little more emphasis was placed on moving forward. But uh, regardless, uh, didn't help us win that game in hindsight. And uh, that was a tough one. So uh, you learn from every experience, and uh, luckily for us, we, we got back to the to the Eastern Conference Finals against Miami in the bubble and uh, couldn't get it done there either. So uh, kind of a regret, bad memory, like you said, but at the same time, those are two of the best memories that I've had in my career as well. A couple, couple here to, to finish off. You talk about being in the finals there. I mean, you're aware of 35 years straight with the Wildcats. The question oh, here from... No one's mentioned that. From, from did Perth Wildcats win? Does he feel there's any pressure to maintain the streak? Well, I can answer that for you. Of course, there's pressure and you've got no other choice but to lean into it and embrace it. But my, let me just tinker with the question a little bit. What do you make of a streak like that? 35 years in a row in a league as competitive as this one. Uh, it's, I mean, it's impressive. Everything about the history of the team is impressive. I, I knew it was a good team. Like, like I said earlier, I was kind of a, an outside follower of the league. I knew Perth was one of the top teams every year. Uh, but when I started to do research for the uh, job process, um, yeah, it was mind-blowing. It's hard to believe that it's even possible. Um, so I'm sure they'll be excited if I am the one that drops the ball. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that work visa will be snapped back pretty quick. Um, 
But at the end of the day, I, I don't mind pressure. I think that's the reason I want to be a head coach again, as opposed to stay as an assistant coach. Um, both jobs have kind of the highs and lows of winning and losing. But when you're the head coach, it's just magnified. It's multiplied uh, tenfold. And uh, as, as hard as the lows are in that situation, the highs are that much, much, much awesome, more awesome. So uh, I miss that feeling. Um, I hope we get more of the highs than the lows. But that's one of the main reasons I wanted to come down here, because it was going to be a situation where the pressure was on and it was a chance for me to prove myself. Um, real pressure is moving your family from uh, a comfy situation in North America in the middle of a pandemic with two little kids uh, hitting four, confident, four continents in three days and then stuffing them in a hotel room for two weeks. That's some pressure, too. So um, if we can get through this. I'm sure the the pressure and the expectations will be something that I'll I'll welcome to try and uh, live up to. It is your very own set of preseason training. Get get into sure. all of that. Hey, let's okay. finish up with this. This is from from Nick Tan, Perth Wildcats super fan. Uh, you spoke about being in Australia previously uh, with the family outside of basketball. What are you most looking forward to experiencing down under? Double summers um we're cheating the system right now so we, we were home in canada for the summer got to enjoy our, our place there and, and uh, go to the beach and do all the outdoor activities and um uh, right now it's getting pretty cold there it's getting pretty cold in northeast usa too so uh probably the thing we're looking forward to most is just cheating the system and getting two summers nice nice i like it that's a wrap mate the wildcats fans came strong you came even stronger and um i'm Good luck for surviving the next 10 days or so, getting out, getting a Tassie, meeting up with the team and getting stuck into it. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. And it's been a long time coming, but we're, we're on the home stretch now. I appreciate you having me on and uh, distracting me for a few minutes. <laughs> Cheers. Mate. We're right back to it. Get involved. Good to, uh, good to chat. Speak soon. Great. 